This is Fedora Silver Blue and it's one of the most powerful and most misunderstood distros in the entire Linux world. Fedora Silver Blue comes from a new generation of immutable distros that promise something revolutionary, unbreakable systems. But these immutable distros also come with a huge misconception about being locked down, inflexible and being too complex. So I installed Fedora Silver Blue to use it as my main system and what I found completely blew my mind. I was so wrong about it. So in this video, we'll be unpacking my experience with Fedora Silver Blue and debunking the biggest myths holding people back from trying this phenomenal operating system. This might just as well be the future of desktop Linux. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Before we jump into the myths, we need to quickly understand what Fedora Silver Blue is and what it's not. Fedora Silver Blue is an immutable atomic variant of Fedora and these big techie words do a good job of driving people away. Immutable distros have a reputation of being locked down, being not customizable, too complex and mainly for the tech people. It's this reputation that drives people away from immutable distros. But all these things are completely misunderstood and there's more to it than meets the eye. Fedora Silver Blue gives us two killer features that you need to understand to use this system effectively. These two features completely change the game. Everybody's had their fair share of headaches with system updates. Updates breaking your drivers, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or even the graphics card not working after an update, the system becoming unbootable, broken packages or dependencies, kernel issues, display starting up in low resolutions, GNOME extensions breaking, yeah, the list is a long one, messy as well. On a traditional distro like Ubuntu, when you hit upgrade, the package manager starts changing files on your live running system one by one. It's like trying to repair a car's engine while it's driving down the highway. If anything goes wrong, a power cut, a network drop or your system is left in a broken half updated state. And sometimes incompatibilities between say things like the GPU driver and the kernel can break things even after the update goes smoothly. Now here's how Fedora Silver Blue flips the script on all of that and it starts with atomic updates. It uses the OS3 technology. When you update using the RPM OS3 upgrade command, it doesn't touch your running system at all. Instead, it builds a brand new updated version of the OS in the background as a single complete image. Basically, in a way, it's downloading the updated ISO image. You can keep working, gaming or browsing where the whole thing gets prepared. If the update process is interrupted for any reason, power outage, crash, whatever, your current system remains totally unaffected. The new update is simply discarded. If everything goes smoothly and the update is processed without any issues, once it's ready, you reboot your computer and it swaps your current system for a new one. It's that simple. But it gets even better. And that leads up to the second killer feature. Now imagine this, you updated your system and everything seems fine initially. But then, your Wi-Fi is not working or a GNOME extension broke the entire desktop or maybe your new graphics driver has balked. We've all been there, right? On a traditional distro, that's the start of a long, painful night of command line surgery. But with Fedora Silver Blue, you gotta get out of jail free card. This is Fedora Silver Blue's second killer feature, the ultimate safety net. By design, Silver Blue doesn't just delete your old system after an update, it keeps the previous, perfectly working version ready as an instant backup. The bootloader just points to the new version when starting up the system, but the old version is still there. Think of it like a giant undo button for your entire operating system. If you reboot after an update and find something is broken, the fix is unbelievably simple. You just reboot, select the previous version from the grub boot menu and once you boot into your old completely working system, run a single command, rpm os3 rollback. This tells your system to make the old stable version your default again. You're not reinstalling anything or troubleshooting complex problems. You're just flipping a switch to go back to a state you know worked. This transforms a system breaking nightmare into a 30 second inconvenience. No messing with time shift, no hunting forum threads for terminal commands, no drama. Fedora Silver Blue's OS3 treats your system like GitHub. You can even view your previous systems, compare them and understand what changes between versions. For power users, this is a dream come true. And even for everybody else, this is, it just gives you that peace of mind package as a simple reboot option. And this is the true magic of Fedora Silver Blue. OS3 combined with atomic updates virtually gives you an unbreakable computing system. And even if something breaks, just reboot and roll back. 
All right, let's kick things off with the biggest, most common myth of them all. You can't customize silver blue. It's immutable, so it's locked down, inflexible, and you're stuck with the default look forever. No themes, no icons, no fun. This one is completely wrong, and it comes from that big scary word, immutable. But I was mistaken here as well. People hear that and think the entire system is a solid block of read-only concrete. But that's not exactly how it works. The immutability only protects the core operating system, the foundation. Your home directory, your personal space is completely yours to do whatever you want. All your themes, icons and fonts live right in your home directory which is 100% writable. You really need to understand this. Let's check it out. First, here we have the standard GNOME desktop. It's nice but we want to add some colors here. First, let's head over to the gnomelook.org and grab a theme and an icon pack. Now back in your home directory, we'll just create the standard folders for our themes and icons right here in your home directory. See, no special commands, no errors. It just works because this is writable. But to apply these, we need the legendary GNOME Tweaks applications. Since this is a system utility, it needs to be added to our base OS. And this, my boys, is the perfect time to show you package layering. It sounds complicated, but it's not. We just run one command sudo rpm os3 install gnome tweaks what this does is it tells silverblue hey man build a new system image that's exactly like my current one but add this one package on top after a quick reboot we are in a new slightly modified system we added a layer on top of the old one yeah we don't use the sudo dnf install command here instead we use sudo rpm os3 install command to install applications and tools to our base system Additionally, Flatpak is already installed with Flathub configured as the source here. So for most things, you don't even need to use these commands. You can directly install any application you want from the software store here. I'm going to go ahead and install extensions manager here as a Flatpak. Let me quickly install the user themes gnome extension here. And here we go. We open tweaks, head to appearance and look at that. Our downloaded themes and icons are right here. We select them and boom, a completely customized desktop. So myth number one, absolutely unequivocally busted. Your desktop's look and feel are completely under your control and you can install applications to the system. You just use the OS3 install command or flatpak. That's it. Okay, on to the next one and this is a big one. You can't be a developer on Silverblue. It's useless because you can't install your compilers, your SDKs, your command line tools. This is a big misunderstanding that many people have and if this is you, the reality is completely different. Here's the thing, Fedora Silverblue was made with developers in mind. Silverblue is arguably a superior platform for development. It just asks you to work smarter by not installing all your development tools directly onto the main OS, which creates a messy tangled web of packages and dependencies. Hear me out. Silverblue's answer is clean, elegant, and it's built right in. It's called Toolbox. It gives you a mutable, fully functional Fedora container that runs inside your immutable Silverblue system. Inside it, you can install anything, compilers, SDKs, language runtimes, you name it. And all of it stays completely isolated from your core OS. It remains completely pristine, no mess, no risk, no dependency hell. Let's actually see it in action. We'll start by creating a new container for our web project. One simple command, toolbox create container my web project. Now to start working, we just enter it. Toolbox enter my web project. And look at the prompt. That little diamond tells us we are now inside our container. Inside here, we have a fully mutable traditional Fedora environment. We can use the familiar DNF command to install whatever we need. Let's grab Go and Node.js. After it's done, we can check the versions and sure enough, they are installed and ready to go. Now for the magic trick. We'll exit the toolbox, returning to our main system. Let's try to run Go version here. Command not found, that's the point. The tool doesn't exist on the host. They are perfectly cleanly isolated inside their containers, not polluting the main base. Now you can create as many toolboxes as you want. Python for one project, go for another, even different Fedora versions if you need. It's like having multiple development VMs without the performance overhead. Now remember, this is not just for coding. You can do this for your non-coding work and projects as well. So myth number two, not just busted, but completely flipped on its head. You get perfectly isolated development environments for every project, which is cleaner, safer, and way more organized than any traditional setup. 
Once you are done with the toolbox container, you can just go ahead and delete it. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. This is more of a pro tip than a myth, but yeah, this myth is quite strong and it's out there and it even seems obvious at times. Silver blue being immutable and all. We have seen that RPM OS3 and Toolbox provide a lot of flexibility. But for the ultimate freedom, the secret weapon is Distro Box. It's like a universal adapter for Linux, letting you run containers of other distros such as Arch or Ubuntu seamlessly on your stable Silverblue system. Distro Box works on any Linux distro, but it is a game changer for immutable distros because it explodes your software choice and that flexibility, giving you access to the largest software library possible without ever polluting your core OS. Let's see this magic in action. First, we need to layer distrobox onto our system. It's a simple command. sudo rpm os3 install distrobox. After a quick reboot, distrobox is ready. Now for the fun part. Let's create an Arch Linux container. Why Arch? Because it gives you access to the legendary Arch user repository or AUR, which is packed with community maintained software. We'll use distrobox create name archbox image arch linux latest. This downloads the arch linux image and sets up your new container. Once that's done, we jump inside. Distrobox enter Archbox. We are now in a fully functional Arch Linux environment. To get access to the AOR, we install Ye, a popular AOR helper. This involves a few standard Arch commands. I'll fast forward. You can copy paste them from the description below. With Ye installed, you can grab almost any application. Let's install Bottles, which lets you run Windows apps using A Yes Bottles. It downloads, compiles, and installs just like it would run a native Arch system. With this, we'll be running Windows applications inside our Arch distro box inside Fedora Silverblue. This is some inception level stuff. Now for the real magic trick, distro box export app bottles. This command tells distro box to create a desktop entry for bottles on the main Silverblue system. Here it is. If you click on it, bottles launches seamlessly running from inside its Arch container but feeling completely native. So myth number three, Fedora Silverblue is not restrictive and if you just use this smart little distro box technique, it just becomes that much more flexible. You gotta be smart about this. Okay, moving on to the next one. Fedora Silverblue is terrible for gaming. Can you even game on an immutable Linux distro? What about the Nvidia drivers? Let's break this down. Nvidia and Linux, especially Fedora has had a rocky relationship, but that's actually a thing of the past. Things have improved vastly now. It's fairly easy to install Nvidia drivers. You just need to enable RPM Fusion and install the drivers. I tried the same process on Silverblue and we just replaced the DNF command with the RPM OS3 command and it worked like a charm. Now for the gaming experience itself. Gaming is top tier, largely thanks to Steam Flatpak which runs in a consistent sandbox environment. Install Steam Flatpak using flatpak install flatup com.valsoftware.steam command. You can also enable Steam Play and play a majority of Windows games here and they work like they are Linux native. Install, play, that's it. This seamless integration means your gaming experience on Silverblue is not just good, it's virtually indistinguishable from a native Windows setup but with added stability and control only an immutable Linux system can offer. Gaming myth absolutely busted. Alright, let's wrap it up with the final myth, the one that gets everything backwards. Silverblue is just some new, unstable, complicated experiment for the more technical of us. Honestly, if you think about it, the real complicated mess is a normal Linux or Windows install after a year or two. It gets slow, cluttered with old packages and broken junk, ton of dependencies. It's all messed up. That's what people call system rot and that is a real headache. Now just think about what we've seen. An update mechanism that literally can't break your system, a bad driver fixed with a single command and a reboot, all your apps and tools along with all their dependencies and libraries and whatnot kept perfectly separate so they can't mess with each other. If something gets tangled up, you can delete the entire toolbox and create a new one. I'm gonna get philosophical here. The simplest solution may not always be the best solution. Sometimes something that's organized, keeps things clean and separate and has a systematic way of doing things, that can be the best solution or way of doing things in life as well. Above all, 
this systematic way of doing things is scalable and maintainable for a long time. That being said, yeah, the learning curve is there. Definitely. Fedora Silverblue requires that you learn a thing or two before you even start using this. Until you get the hang of the basics, Fedora Silverblue can feel like an alien foreign system. It definitely did for me until I got the basics of this operating system handled. It did trouble me. And it is rough around the edges. It's not as polished as say the main Fedora, which has been around for longer and is very mature. I was even frustrated at certain moment. But once I learned the basic commands, the working concepts of the system, it started becoming a pleasant experience. And the results may not be immediate and upfront, but yeah, once you learn the basic commands here, learn how things work and take the time to set up your toolbox or distrobox environments, it's gonna pay off for a really long time. Alright, there you have it. If this distro resonated with you, you found it interesting, the download link for Silverblue is given in the description below. You can also download it with other desktop options such as KDE Plasma, Sway, Budgie, etc. Okay, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 10 hottest Linux apps that you should be using in 2025. It's got some really cool ones, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.